All right, it's Boom 1039, Philly Hip Hop R&B and Throwbacks. It's Pierre Estaco. Good morning. I have some lovely guests in the studio with me. How are you? So, Terry, Ryan, and Sandra from the Department of Public Health. Introduce yourselves for me. Okay, my name is Terry Johnson. I do communications work with the uh, Philadelphia Department of Public Health. My name is Sandra Harmon. I'm actually the outreach coordinator for the Nice Town CDC, and I'm a former smoker and friends of the health department. Okay. Awesome. So you all have this huge campaign, Break the Cycle. What does that mean, Break What Cycle? You know, one of the greatest public health challenges facing the African-American community is the addiction to uh, tobacco products. Mm -hmm. And big tobacco companies use predatory marketing tactics to lure our children into smoking cigarettes. And I don't know, I'm a former smoker, and I know I started when I was about 12 years old smoking cigarettes. And most people who do smoke start 11, 12, 13, and 14 years old. And tobacco companies know that, and they will use every tactic possible to get new smokers to replace those who die or quit. Mm. And, and I, I really have to add, this is, this is a public health challenge as great as, say, the struggle against police brutality or the fight for jobs and housing and education. Uh, this is a very critical matter, and uh, it has the urgency of now. It's a great overview. So the Break the Cycle campaign is really focused on how there is predatory marketed uh, tobacco products in low-income communities and communities of color throughout Philadelphia. In the industry, the tobacco industry has a long history of deception and manipulation targeting and subjecting these communities to that marketing. Uh, One specific strategy that they use is adding flavorings to tobacco products, including candy and fruit flavors. But what we're here to really talk about today with you and your listeners is adding menthol flavoring to tobacco products to entice and lure young people, young children of color, into tobacco use. So with this campaign, we're asking people to do two things. One is quit smoking, not necessarily because it's bad for you, don't do it, which is Mm -hmm. a message I think a lot of people have heard, though it's an important one. Mm -hmm. But quit smoking as a way to defy and oppose the industry in your neighborhood and then sharing this information with people that you love and you care about who may not know how menthol flavoring in tobacco products Um, puts them at risk for addiction, disease, and death. It suppresses the urge to cough. It reduces the urge to cough, which is one of your earliest responses to smoking. Young people start, 90% of whom start under the age of 18, and it also numbs your throat. So you take deeper drags, you get more nicotine, you get more addicted. Mm. And so uh, youth who start with menthol brands are twice as likely, twice as likely, to become daily frequent lifetime smokers as a result. Wow. Now I have a question about hookah. That's often compared to, you know, being worse than pretty much cigarettes. Mm -hmm. Is that true? So there is no safe tobacco product, no matter what form it comes in. It could be cigars. It could be smokeless tobacco. It could be cigarettes. It could be hookah. So there are some data showing that an hour-long hookah session is the equivalent of about 100 to 200 cigarettes. Wow. So up to a carton of cigarettes a day. Wow. Um, We're talking a lot today specifically about menthol cigarettes um, as a particular form of tobacco products because far and above, if you ask people what types of tobacco products they're using, uh, cigarettes are a very, very popular form of yeah. tobacco products. The menthol can be found in other other tobacco products, not just cigarettes as well. All right, so if there's a teenager out there that's an avid smoker, mm-hmm. what advice would you give them to quit right now? Yeah, and so there is uh, free resources that are available uh, for on the state level and also on the local level. Anyone trying to quit smoking can visit smokefreephilly.org. Mm-hmm. And there's tons of great resources there on menthol about the Break the Cycle campaign. Um, as well as um, calling 1-800-QUIT-NOW. That's the Mm -hmm. Pennsylvania free quit line. Mm -hmm. They can provide free medications and free uh, coaching and counseling to to any caller. And you know the thing, too, remember, it's not easy to quit smoking. Mm -hmm. You can address that. Yeah, I was going to ask you that. I I certainly can. Um, I am the product of the menthol additive. I was raised in a family of smokers. My parents smoked. Um, And at the time that they were smokers, there was no menthol in those cigarettes. Um, And I think that the the likelihood of me actually becoming a smoker would have been less Mm -hmm. um, had those been the only cigarettes that I was exposed to because they were gross. (laughs) But they added the the menthol. They made it easier, as Ryan mentioned, the urge to to, to cough, which is the immediate response when you're young and you're new and you're learning to smoke. Um, And I had that additive that increased the likelihood of my addiction to cigarettes. That addiction lasted for 40 years. Mm. I had, in those 40 years, I wasn't always a happy smoker. Mm -hmm. In fact, once I got old enough to learn the adversities of smoking, I wanted to quit. I made numerous attempts to quit and was unsuccessful. Uh, Fortunately, I did benefit from that Quit Philly program 
and was able to follow a program all the way through to completion that got me to this point where I'm grateful to say that it's been nearly two years since I've had a safe ride. Awesome. Good yeah, that you. is awesome. That's really I feel good. So great as a result of that. <laughs> I feel like I gained a part of my life back mm-hmm. as a result of not smoking anymore. And I will also, and I, I spoke to Ryan about it, I'm like the worst now. Don't smoke around me because, yeah. you know, I would do the Matrix and all those great <laughs> things to avoid it. Yeah. Um, and I think a, a big part of that is this. I just never want to be exposed to that level of external control from anything or anybody ever again. Absolutely. Each year, over 3,600 people die as a result of cigarette, tobacco-related illnesses. Mm. Now, that's more than gun violence, which we know is a huge issue absolutely. in the African Yeah, community. absolutely. More than drug overdoses, more than alcohol. You know, so this is a deadly killer and it's a systematic killer. Mm -hmm. By that, I mean that there are big corporations who make millions or billions of dollars off selling these deadly products to our children. And we have to make sure that this is part of our fight for justice Mm -hmm. in this country, you know, to be able to live healthy lives and have our children free from this kind of predatory marketing tactics. And, And really, tobacco companies have really gone over the top with some of the flavored products. Ryan has talked about menthol and menthol is truly the the deadly killer mm. and because probably most african americans who smoke smoke methylated products Absolutely. but ryan can also tell you about some of these other insidious mm-hmm. products the flavoring yeah so there are candy and fruit flavors that are packaged in very bright packaging it looks just like candy mm-hmm. they're very cheap for as cheap as five for 99 cents and they're often sold in retail spaces very close to other kid-friendly products like cookies and candies and cakes for instance wow. i regularly talk to fourth graders who are nine years old and hold up these products and say what does this look like and all the kids will uniformly say it looks like candy so we're talking fruit punch chocolate grape strawberry um Tutti Frutti flavors that are meant to minimize the harshness and irritation of tobacco smoke, make it more palatable for young tobacco users, Mm -hmm. and just like menthol, initiate the future of our city, our young people, into this addiction. I just want to mention, too, that it's not just death that results from this, but the suffering that precedes that death for an individual. So Mm -hmm. it's not just quality of life. I'm sorry, length of life. It's also quality of life. So I still see patients in a clinic in South Philadelphia for tobacco treatment. And I worked with a gentleman smoking Newports, uh, started as a teenager, and had his first heart attack at 37. Mm. And is fearful of what this product is doing to him and anxiously trying to quit. And when I talked with him about menthol, he was incredibly surprised to hear this information. He was just not aware of what was really in this product that he'd been using for years and years of his life. That's why I'm so happy that you all are informing us about this because there's so many people, teenagers, kids, that they just smoke because they think it's cool. They see someone else do it, but they're not thinking that, hey, this could happen to me. Because it's never like, oh, it could be me. They right. don't ever think about it like that. Like, oh, that's not going to happen to me. I'm just going to smoke, 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 and mm-hmm. I'll be fine. Or I can quit whenever I want. Like, that doesn't control me. But in reality, yes, it does control you. You become addicted, and you could suffer from some of the symptoms. Mm-hmm. You can visit smokefreephilly.org or call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. That also has information on Smoke Free Philly about that Break the Cycle campaign that people can see and they can hear directly, including more information about uh, menthol and flavored tobacco as well. Awesome. Thank you so much for stopping by today. Thanks for having us. Yes.